saying the show started until people actually sound hyped. Hi there, my name is 60 Lil and welcome to my audition tape for Def Noodles Comedy Def Jam <coughs> Violence Edition. Def Noodles, you put the punch in punchline. <laughs> Seriously? Did I just watch a comedian push another comedian? Did I just watch Ad Salt happen? This is not okay. Before we start the video, let me show you what happened. Okay, this dude named Salvo, which is already a funny name, came up on stage. He traveled all the way to Def Noodle's show to roast him in a comedy battle because Def Noodle said pull up or shut up, which is what I usually say to my ex-girlfriend. But he came on stage, he was getting the crowd riled up, and Def Noodle opens the door and like he's Triple H, sees him and he's like, this is the game! And then just pushes him off stage. It's crazy. I know, it's hilarious, right? This is what you paid to see when you came to see <laughs> Dave Chappelle or any other comedian. You just wanted him to take a chair and... Right? <laughs> what is it with comedians and being violent? At first it was Will Smith and Chris Rock. Now, Def Noodles and this guy. Why are we being... Why? Why are the punchlines getting so hectic? I just don't get it. <laughs> Before we get any further into the video, I'd just like to take one second to be serious. I do not condone any form of this at all. Whether it is a person pushing another person, a person inciting or actually using violent measures, I don't care if you're friends, lovers, brothers, sisters, father and daughter. It is not okay. That I stand by, okay? Now, Def Noodles, is a comedian and he really puts the comedy in comedy because he certainly can't see the comedy but objectively speaking this man is a carrot top if he fused with maybe Bane and had all of his brain cells removed and just had angry testosterone placed in it um he was once a comedian that was on the rise he did a news channel if you've seen my other video I've sort of went through this he's sort of like Keemstar but a little less he was sort of like Keemstar but more PG and told the news in a way that lots of people who are off a younger age probably liked it. He was a YouTube drama channel, so to speak. He then ditched that and decided, fuck it, I'll become a comedian. But the problem was, comedians need usually to be funny. That was the main problem with Dennis. He didn't have that. So then he's like, okay, what does Mike Tyson have that I don't? Oh yes, punching speed. And decided maybe this will become less of a comedy club and more of a fight club. I don't know if he watched David Finch's movie Comedy, but maybe he watched David Finch's movie Fight Club and instead used that technique to incite violence in his club. So today I'm going to be reacting to the second roast battle, which somehow happens to be worse than the first. If you watched the first one and you had a cringe overload, then this is going to kill you. So I'm sorry in advance. But if it doesn't, by the end of the video, do consider subscribing. Uh, I want to get past Deaf Noodles and subscribers and I think we're not there yet so that would be cool also if you'd like to follow me at 16 leo underscore on my instagram that way you can tell me anything you want maybe just say hi or tell me a joke health starts on the inside first but sometimes it does get hard trying to find the right food supplements and vitamins I don't know about you but the vitamin aisle at the store is super intimidating to me like there are so many options and dosages it's hard to know exactly what I actually need which is why I love trying care off care off is a subscription service that offers high quality vitamins proteins and supplements to every single month. They take the guesswork out of buying the right vitamins for your needs. All you do is take a quiz about your diet, lifestyle, and goals, and they give you recommendations based on your answers. Since trying Care Off, I feel more accountable. I'm actually taking strides towards my goals and staying on track by setting a healthy routine for myself. I'm older, way invested in this whey protein. That was really fat. It's been great to take while on my fitness journey. To support muscle growth and recovery, two scoops of this has a generous 18 grams of protein and it tastes good. I've also been trying care of Superberry Antioxidants. It's made from 11 super fruits, fun to say, like a cayenne goji berries. It's got vitamin C and helps stimulate collagen production. The older we get, the less collagen we produce, so this is a must try. And I'm also able to adapt my subscription as my needs evolve and change with the quizzes I take. Best of all, care of's daily personalized packs are made from a plant-based foam making it compostable. The ingredients in Kerof's products are made with clean ingredients that are good for you and backed by science research, so I feel good about what I'm ingesting. Take Kerof's quiz and see what vitamins and supplements they recommend for you. Click on the link below and use my code 16leo50 for 50% off your first order with Kerof. Alright, so as I said, Def Noodles has now done his first comedy show. It went horribly wrong and he said, fuck it, let's do another one. Great. It's fine 
to do more. I keep saying this and I will always say it, trying does not mean you're failing. If it doesn't work, you can still try again. I'm never going to fault someone for trying things. Where I probably will fault someone is if they start using extreme measures to do things. You see, Def Noodles said in a tweet, pull up or shut up, and he kept inviting YouTubers with over 250,000 subscribers to come to his venue and roast battle him. Because he wants to roast battle. Much like Eminem's 8 Mile, we have a freestyle rap battle. Hey, your hair is black, you are whack, and I think your mom smokes crack. He was like that, but he's like, okay, I'll just do it in comedy. The problem is Def Noodles is not really that good with improvising comedy because even in his most recent videos, he self-admittedly says that he writes down a script. By the way, I don't. <laughs> <coughs> Def Noodles, by all accounts, seems like a, you know, normal human. He has a criticism problem. I think that's fair to say by now. Not good with criticism. Very, very self-deflective. Not self-reflective. But the other thing that I find very interesting is that this man is a total savage when it comes to Twitter. He goes by Zaddy Noodles on Twitter, and he claims he is the internet's bad boy. And with tweets like these, you probably believe him. So this was the quartering replying to Def Noodles in response to the fact that he wanted to fight Kavos in a ring, like have a box match with him the quartering said he'll come there only if the quartering vs ethan klein is the undercard to which zaddy noodle said shut the fuck up or i'm gonna pee in your mouth how r kelly of you that is very very trapped in the closet of you he then like i said fought with kavos a person who i think actually made him cry i'm not really sure what happened there i don't know too much but all i know is when i saw the tweets apparently deaf noodles went from instead of resorting to comedy to resorting to i'm gonna actually box you in the ring i don't know what it is about youtubers these days but if they can't solve their problems through words we're going back to primal urges and just fighting people fuzzy tube used to be a prank channel before his face got pranked by JG. You know what I mean? It's just, it's crazy these days. But anyway, here's some of the conversation. This dude isn't about shit. He's talking around a fight now. I've said it. I've said my piece. Ball is in his court. If he really wants to fight me, I'm down to it either on the street at Street Beefs. That's it. I'm done with this clown. Tweet a pic of yourself shirtless. Let's see if you're actually ready for a fight. Def noodles. <laughs> oh no, that's a fighting. I don't know if those are fighting words. Every time I say send me a shirtless pic, it's not to fight. I'm a lover, not a fighter. I'll pull an all-nighter. I'll get it right off. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, Def noodles. I see what you Doing. Is that noodle floppy or hard? You know what? I mean? Oh my god, he even says in the other tweet, bare knuckles. He's bare knuckle fighting. He's not even fighting with gloves. This is not a YouTube fight. There's no referee. He's gonna meet him in an alleyway and either suck him off or fight him. Oh my god. Stop crying and just accept it. We all know you have the body mass of a marshmallow. Zero conditioning. Can't even last one round in the ring. Hopefully, hopefully, last long in bed. This way it'll be quick and you know you'll be able to walk home from the hospital. Uh, honestly, if he walked home from the hospital, would you have really done that much damage i'm just saying since you're too puss to do a street fight let's do it on street beefs bare knuckles next week this man clearly has got a problem on twitter i call it twitter fingers uh where you just cannot get control of your fingers and you say things that are bigger than you and in real person you don't seem to back it up but unfortunately the man salvo who's a comedian had his back turned during the moment in which deaf noodles chose to push him off stage he went in his video and later claimed that it was in self-defense and he was just establishing a boundary but the last time i established a boundary with someone i didn't have to push them off stage whenever someone hugs me i don't go fuck off me bro i just say fuck off me <laughs> bro you know ah and this one is back to the quartering his other enemy or so it seems he's got a couple now optimus is also one of them who he called a um this one says suck my dick and drink my piss you polar bear with jaundice looking motherfucker if you're wondering what the reply was in regards to the quartering said Deaf Noodle's downfall is something that will be a case study someday. I am wondering the same. <sighs> so with that being said, I think you know enough about Deaf Noodles to know this man is not really there. And I don't mean that he's not there mentally, I mean that he's physically not there. Because his last show in Las Vegas, apparently, he didn't exist. It wasn't there. If you look at some of the phone calls, this dude who said that he was going to perform wasn't even on the card. Yo, what's up? So I'm calling to ask if, uh, I, I heard this guy Dennis Fetosa was performing tonight at the 11:30, but I clicked on the Eventbrite uh, link to buy tickets, and it says the event is unavailable. Yeah, yeah, uh, he's not performing. I've never heard of the guy. Yeah, I don't. I'm confused myself. If you're, I've gotten a, like two calls about this guy. I've never heard of him. 
So with that being said, let's take a look at the roast battle too. We'll take a look from both perspectives. Salvo, who is a comedian from Ohio, came out all the way to actually challenge Deaf Noodles to a roast battle. And while I will admit, Salvo is a very big troll himself. And he looks like Charlie Kelly from It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. And I can't unsee it now. It's kind of funny that the show even exists. Because as much as I hate it, and I hate to admit this, all of the characters I remembered from the first roast, and not only that, it's like a really bad episode of The Office mixed with community and I kind of like it. It's so chaotic that I found myself enjoying the shit more than I should. So prepare yourselves for probably the worst episode on YouTube TV yet. It starts off with Salvo from his perspective going to the venue, taking a seat and causing general disruption among the crowd. Well, right here. Right. Where's, where's Miranda Meadows? Miranda? So who are you guys all here to see tonight? Salvo! Salvo comes out screaming, he's really, you know, pretty crazy. In fact, Dev Noodles actually made a video before the second Rose Battle saying that this man actually came to the office and threatened them. He showed footage and uh, not only did he not threaten them, he arrived on a fucking scooter. S there's nothing less threatening than a motherfucker on a scooter, okay? Even a bicycle you could find in Compton and be like, God damn it, CJ, what the hell? You can't, there's no gangster on a scooter. That is just, there's no way to be violent and be like, I'm gonna kill you. I'm gonna kill you. Now one person got it! Now one! Well, I just have a card. Oh, you wanna do a card? Do you have an ATM around here? Uh, I think it's also interesting to note he also went to get some refreshments and some liquor at the venue and uh, the liquor man said that he only accepts cash which is very very troubling because it leads me to believe there's no liquor license there <sighs> which you can't do is illegal but it's not the biggest problem in either of their lives I just thought it was interesting to note are you ready Can we get a response? Can we get at least a hey or a fuck you deaf noodles, please? We're not getting the show started until people actually sound hype. So the show begins and Dennis is like, hey man, uh, can I get a hand? Can I get a round of applause? Everybody's okay. And everyone's like, and Dennis is actually mad because this is the second time he's asked the crowd to get hyped and they've become less than hyped. In fact, Salvo, being the person he is, who I don't actually know, brought some of his fans along to the show. So it's sort of like half the crowd is deaf noodles and half is Salvo's. Not really sure what's happening there, but a roast is about to go down. The show is not going to get started until people make some fucking noise. This, again, this is like an angry principal in an auditorium. Listen, guys, if you don't sit the fuck down, I'm gonna take my penis out and start waving it like a helicopter. Do you want that? I'm 56, it's a prune down there. No, seriously. You guys are being inconsiderate of my fucking feelings. You're a bitch, Miranda. Oh, her name's actually, I'm sorry. You're gonna sit here. Hold on, hold on, I got you, I got him. All right, everybody in the then he gets Vice Principal Corey to come out, and Corey has that deep, booming black voice. You know, the one that Dennis wish he had. And Corey is like, all right, people, let's go! Everybody in the back. Hey, hold on, hold on, hold on. There we go. Fuck Dev Noodles! Fuck Dev Noodles! Fuck Dev Noodles! They start the show by resorting to a chant that is fuck deaf noodles, which I just, that's, I mean, I'm not sure why Dennis even let that one happen. Also, another interesting point that I find funny, Salvo continually calls deaf noodles Dennis Noodles, so he combines his actual first name with his YouTube name. That is fucking fantastic. That's like saying Felix Pie. God damn it, that is a weird thing to do. Deaf Noodles! Uh, okay, I guess, I guess they're ready. I guess they're fucking ready. He gets them ready, there are some hella technical difficulties because in the show, which is an hour and something minutes, which I had to watch and cut down, I would say 20, 25 minutes is no audio. But during the no audio section, when there is nothing playing, that's when Salvo decides to go up and get the crowd all riled up and he's like, Yeah man, my name is Salvo, put it in your cup, and don't you give a nut, and you could bust a nut, and he's just performing, doing his thing. But behind him, Deaf Noodles opens the door like Oscar the Grouch from Sesame Street and then comes out swinging. As soon as he sees the shorter man, he's like, oh, Hulk smash. And uh, comedy ensues. I fast forwarded this part so it looks like a silent film.
Uh, it's just two men pointing at each other like they're at a bar after a fight after one of them had way too many drinks. You! Just got, man, if this black man wasn't here, I'd just... Man, you're lucky Corey's that fat. I can't. There's no way I could get around him at that time. Whew, man, if you if he wasn't there, I would I, would, I man. You don't you didn't even know. Ha <laughs> ha. You don't know what I do to you. This is honestly closer to 8 Mile than it is to whose line is it anyway. Have you ever started a comedy club and it ended up being 8 Mile? All the rappers came there and like, what's up, bro? What's up, Lo? What you doing, man? Huh? Comedy club. Yeah, I'll tell you a joke. Yeah, I'll tell you a joke. Big smoke. That dude, that dude trash, man. I'ma smoke him. Ha <laughs> ha. This is uh, less of a comedy club and more of a place that mics just stand. I'm pretty sure there's no jokes being said. There are more punches being thrown than there are jokes being said at this comedy club. I understand that this- like Austin Powers and shit. At this point, the audio comes back on and I hear the funniest thing that I've heard in a while. Corey from behind the scenes, I don't know why, has a mic and he's like, You got your chest out? You like Austin Powers and shit. I have no idea who he's talking to, but that is the funniest shit that I've heard in a while. All right, Corey, hold up. Hold up, Corey. The fact that it's feeding into the crowd and everyone can hear it and they're like, Austin Powers and shit. Shit, 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 shit. shit. You got your chest out? Ow, 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 ow. Uh, we're gonna put on a show for you today. Started a little hectic. That's what happens sometimes, okay? That's this is a live fucking theater. Uh, again, so at this point, Dennis comes out and he's like, "Hey, we're gonna start the show." It was a little wild, a little crazy. <laughs> you know, you know the show. Whose line is it anyway? When Wayne Brady came out and strangled the other hosts. That, that was funny. <laughs> but then he gets Corey to start roasting Salvo and nobody really listens to Corey because Salvo's getting the crowd warmed up and they're just chanting his name. Y'all sitting here like Mr. Salvo Waffles got the best outfit on. He got a Bill Cosby sweater on right now. This is nasty work, y'all. Yeah, anyway. Come on, Dad. Come Yo, Arthur, on, Dad. come out here, bro. He got on Doc Martens, too. This nigga fresh as... <laughs> was that even a... Was that a compliment? This guy got on Doc Martens, too, man. What, 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 oh, what size are those? Those are 11? Damn, he got some, some nice shoes, man. Oh, wow. This guy Got fresh, bro. Whoa. Deaf Noodles wears Vans. They're mine. <laughs> you went to IU? You went to IU? That's good for you, bro. You went to IU? We got oh, Arthur bro, Hamilton in the house. Get, get your mic. Come on now. I love some good blooming. At this point, Arthur comes on, and Arthur is my second favorite character in this whole shebang. He is the man that I like to refer to as that's weird guy. And if you want to play a drinking game right now, now would be the perfect time. Please don't blame me if you pass out in a pool of your own piss. But take a shot for every time this man says. That's weird! Promise, you'll be Russian if you still make it by the end of it. So in case anybody's planning on ha faking a seizure or having a seizure, whatever it is, uh, we got an EMT here as well, so you'll be covered. He's so, a yeah. if you fake a seizure, you lame as fuck, that's weird. Yeah. That's weird! If you fake a seizure, that's weird! Man, why you keep faking a seizure? That's weird, bro! Arthur has some of the best words in the game. That's weird is part of 90% of his vocabulary. The other 10% is him talking about either robotic computer titty or people getting pussy. Arthur's, Arthur's IQ is probably the same amount of fingers he has, but hey, listen, he has a mic, so let's just... Okay, you, you look pretty- Yeah, it is weird, isn't it, Arthur? That's weird! That's weird! That's, thank you, Arthur. Fantastic journalism right there, bro. Pretty mad? Why don't you go? Cool. Hold up, cup. Arthur, he's trying- uh, Def Noodles goes off on stage trying to do some actual stuff, and Arthur is just going left rampant, just looking at people's cups. You got gin and juice in your cup. You got lean, and you got vodka. Oh, that's water? That's weird! That's weird! Try to read a name, bro. Hold up. Oh, read a name. Uh, Yama. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold up, hold up. Yeah, don't- just don't yeah. Yeah. Corey on the side is- Start screaming, Yeba, come on out. And he does it in his Corey voice. Come on out! In the bucket, because then I'm going to pick him out again. God damn! Yeah, that's Corey. Hey yo! No? Alright. You know what? I got to give it to Corey for actually trying to hype this crowd up. He tried. Didn't work, but he tried. This is uh, three jokes each. So Corey fucks on out of there. He's like, I can't help this ship. Uh, I'm done. And now they have the first actual roast battle. The roast battle is always the worst part of the show. I'm not even going to talk about the contestants because they're just so lackluster. I don't know where you found these people, Dennis, but they look like they're being held against their own wool. And if they're not, oh, God, help everyone. All right, everybody, give it up for anorexic fucking Wolverine over here. I don't know. <laughs> Yama wears glasses so people won't think he's threatening.
You wear glasses, bro. What is with people? What is with comedians on this roast battle roasting other comedians for having the same thing that they have? There's like two white comedians and one's like, you're white, idiot. You probably shop at Trader Joe's, you fucking idiot. You probably don't even assemble your own things at Ikea, idiot. Idiot. Why? Why? <laughs> Evan wears glasses so people don't know how he's so that he's stupid. Evan wears glasses so people don't see see how that he's so stupid. This is this is the level that we're dealing with. We're dealing with comedians of this caliber. It's like Robin Williams if he was in Space Jam and they sucked the talent out of him and he was just Robin Wood. Did Black Panther inspire you to be a better person? Did Black did what? That's just racist. That's that's racial. Did um Fuck. Did Brokeback Mountain encourage you to live your truth? <laughs> You've seen more gay movies than me, and I fucked dudes. I don't even know if that's a... Is that a compliment or a diss or a compliment? It's an achievement. I've, I've never seen both comedians lose a match before. Have you, ever, have you ever watched a sports match so bad where both teams just lost? The only person who really lost was the fans, actually. This is that. <laughs> That was, I'm sorry, fellas, it was kind of painful, man. <laughs> you gotta bring it up next time. Those are the dirtiest white shoes I've ever seen. <laughs> this is less, this is more factual now. Those are some dirty white shoes and I had to drive you home because your car doesn't start sometimes. Jeff Noodles, can I go home? I don't like this anymore. It is. <laughs> Oh, he even said it. It's just a fact. It's just a fact. Oh, my God. Oh, you might as well come up there and read some fucking uh, low-fat, low-carb, chocolate-favored sauce. Hey, nutritional information. Yabba has more servings per bottle than 12. And he's brown, just like this chocolate. Um, But he's more than one gram. <laughs> Yabba's fat. <laughs> yeah, this guy parks illegally. Okay, I'm gonna call her right there. That's it. She's like, <laughs> thank God Dennis stopped at the snitching. This guy parks illegally. Two more minutes in. This guy sells coke from the trunk of his car. <laughs> Come on, guys, like me. <laughs> yeah, but it's probably sitting there like, that's my side hustle. What the hell? Evan looks like every GTA character. That oh, there's more. That you can't play as. Evan looks like if Critical went into radiation for a long time and never came out. He looks like the side effect of what happens after you go to Chernobyl. You started off as Critical, you came out as Evan. I bought a lifetime subscription to World of Warcraft. Hey okay. <laughs> what did you say? What up, little biggie? What up? <laughs> the second comedian that comes out is literally, honest to God, a GTA character. I don't know if he's a real human being. I'm, I'm actually not sure if he's a real human. Please, in the comments, tell me if you think this guy is a human or a caricature of a person. Because I think he's, he's like, if he's not putting on a show and not putting on an act, this is the most fundamentally funny man I've ever seen in my life. He laughs at his own jokes in a rhythm. He's like, you know what to do? Ha <laughs> ha! And then he stops. It's like a wind-up doll that as soon as it stops, he goes back to not thinking. As soon as he comes out, he disses. I don't know if it's even a diss, but he just talks to Deaf Noodles and he's like, What's up, little dicky? Ha <laughs> ha! And then he just stands there and waits for the joke. Hey, y'all, nobody could find this dude on page six. Looks like the Indian Where's Waldo. <laughs> nobody can find this dude on page six. He looks like the Indian Where's Waldo. <laughs> I don't even think he's brown, but all right. Uh, his name is Los Digits, but he can't count to 10. This guy sucks as well, don't worry. But Los Digits is the real hero here. Oh, that was whack. <laughs> <laughs> that was whack. <laughs> that was whack. That was shit. <laughs> that sucked ass. <laughs> Why'd you laugh after you said it? That pretty much defeats the purpose. That's like saying I'm so sad. <laughs> I'm crying for the funeral. <laughs> hey yo. That's how you start a comedy set. Hey yo. Yo, if this fool was a Fortnite dance move, he'd be the feed the kittens. <laughs> All right. Yeah, okay. If this guy was a Fortnite dance move, he'd be the feed the kittens dance move. Mm. What does that mean? Doesn't need to make sense when you're clearly not from Earth. Clearly, someone coded you into existence. This is the smartest person of all time coded a man into existence and let him have sentience. And he's just existing as JP, the shitty comedian. That's amazing. Whoa. Uh, tough crowd today. Holy shit. Uh, <laughs> 
I think I think it's been obvious since the beginning of the show. To a bunch of geeks, dog. What the fuck is this? <laughs> JP then starts roasting the crowd, calling them geeks because JP is the absolute alpha male that is the alpha male. I mean, can you find a hotter man than JP besides I don't know, maybe Christopher Walken? Yo. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. You guys see that? Wait, stand up, dude. Look at the guy calling me a loser. Look at yeah. this guy. Oh, <laughs> JP then points out the guy that called him a loser, and they start cheering for him. So it backfires on JP yet again. J JP, by the way, stands for Justice of the Peace. So, um, you know, he, he preaches peace and positivity, and then he takes it away every time he does stand-up, so that's good. What are you, dog? What are you? She has no sound. You just lost your... All right, then. <laughs> he then. He then just asked Salvo, what is he, twice? And then called him some epithet. What are you, dog? What are you? Bitch. <laughs> It's a good joke, man. JP is really learning how to do things his own way. JP's coming into his own. If you just give him two more seasons, he might end up on a sitcom called Cartel Me What Your Secret Is. Just lost your credit card at a tiki bar, right? I don't have a joke yeah. on that. I just think it's hilarious that this guy goes to a tiki bar. Hey, yo, this guy is so stupid. He thought Harry was a dog. <laughs> no. No, no. JP, sit down. Come here, JP. Come with me, JP. There's a room for you somewhere deep down in the south, maybe. There's a room with a forest and a hole where you can shit in whenever you want so you don't have to flush the toilet and get confused. A little lake for a fish to go there. You might have to snorkel to, you know, catch it because nobody's going to let you in your rod. But JP, just come with me. Follow me to the abyss. Did he just say this dude thinks Indian something is a dog? Curry is a dog? What did he say? Yo, this guy is so stupid. He thought... Harry was a dog. <laughs> what even was that, JP? That was not only Raciel, but it was just plain stupid. Really, really. You sh some people just don't deserve a mic in their hands. Not me, other people. That pretty much sums up the show. I don't know who this girl is, but as soon as she went to talk, there was technical and audio issues. Fernando. Oh shit, my girl Miranda's back and she always roasts Deaf Noodles as if it's a pleasantry. It's not even his turn to get roasted and she just cannot help herself. Yo Deaf, how you wearing sweatshorts and still got no dick print? <laughs> Lovely. Miranda. I love her. She's 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 the one. She's the one. She's the only thing holding the show together. Who the fuck is Fernando? I have no idea. Yo, what's up? We don't know who Fernando is, but Ernesto returns. And if you've seen the first show, you've known that Ernesto is one of the worst roasters of all time. But he's back now. Ernesto, this is crazy. Y'all got the same energy of a town that just had a mash. Miranda tells a joke and then gets booed, and like Miranda, she boos back. Boo! I, I just, I can't tell whether I love or hate this woman. She has the loudest, most scathing voice I've ever heard, but the actions and things that she does. Imagine telling someone a joke and they boo you and you're like, No, boo you, actually! Boo! It's, it's amazing. I, I, you need more Mirandas on your team, Deaf Noodles. Seriously. You need a couple more Corys and Mirandas, and a couple less Ernestos and JPs. You look like, you look like Dylan Sprouse dressed as a girl, dude. How would you know what that looks like, Ernesto? <laughs> I see you've been watching stuff in Incognito again, bro. Uh, Ernesto, you look like an overweight panini. I like Miranda. Miranda's cool. I, I like how her hair's as dirty as her white Air Force Ones. Ernesto then goes back to the dirty shoes joke that so many other comedians are doing, as if that's a problem. I don't know why dirty shoes are an issue, but okay. They painted, motherfucker. <laughs> those are pretty lit, I'm not gonna lie. He then goes back on his joke once she says they're painted, and then he's like, actually, those are really cool shoes. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. Sorry for roasting you. That's my bad. <laughs> Your fucking vans are dirtier than Nobody told you to eat it, bro. Relax. Hey, at least I'm getting pussy. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> All right. That's really, Ernesto is one of the saddest human beings I've ever seen. Ooh. Miranda roasted him, said that something about his mom's pussy, and then says at least she gets some, to which Ernesto replied, That's true. I just feel sorry for Ernesto. Does he have a Patreon or something? He should. He, sh he, sh he should get Ernesto. <sighs> Tier one is sad. They're real tears, if you know what I mean. <laughs> This shit crazy. Alright, a lot of y'all yeah. is trolls. Arthur then crazy. comes back in, my boy. Yeah. 
That's weird. There it is. What, are we up to three shots now? That's weird. That's weird. You salvo. You salvo. Remember why you have a crowd. Remember why you have a crowd. It's because of us. But you spent money though. That's weird. That's weird. That's weird. Come on, guys. You spent money. That's weird. Def Noodles went to Ace Fest, a place that he wasn't invited and actually got kicked out. That's weird. But it's, I guess it's not because it's your boss. Anyway, I'm just saying. Hippo crazy. Weird. That's weird. I'm sorry. Thank you for elaborating. It's not just weird, it's weird. He turned into Shaggy for, that's weird, Scoob. You, you can unsubscribe, that was really bad, I know. Weird. Are you a bitch? Nah, you have to subscribe again, he keeps saying it. Are you up to seven shots now, eight shots? Are you at the bar just like, no more, no, no, come on. Arthur keeps saying that's weird. No, please, come on, Arthur. That's weird. <laughs> he then starts going off to Salvo. You a bitch, that's weird. Being a bitch is weird. That's weird. You have, you, you're a bitch, weird. Whoever taught Arthur the word weird needs to rethink their life. Please get this man a dictionary. Can we get a Patreon for Arthur so I can maybe get him a thesaurus and, and maybe teach him another word? Look, actually, synonyms for weird. Uncanny. Eerie. How about this Arthur? That's eerie. How about that one? Unnatural. That's unnatural. Maybe. <laughs> that's mysterious. A few moments later. Any one of those would probably suffice. So please. <laughs> Please, um, maybe include some of them in your vocabulary next time, Mr. Otho. What's up, Pac-Man? That is weird! <laughs> we gotta... Nah, he, finally. That is weird! He's, now it's like a very, like, that is weird! You just travel across the country to me! Yeah, it's like weird! <laughs> that is like, oh, okay, he's back to formal. It, it used to be, that is weird, now it's like, and that's like weird. That's, that's pretty weird. Arthur is experimenting with his weirds at this point. He's like, he's like a, uh, chef. A Michelin star chef. And that's weird is his word of choice, and he just cuts it up in ways that he wants it to be said that is weird that's weird weird that is but he brought a security guard. like i never see somebody go to somebody but brought a security guard with him that's so weird that's weird bro how many shots are we up to I, I lost count so long ago you guys still drinking or some of you passed out right now that's weird as tough. yeah well some of you are in the hospital right now that is weird arthur you're, you're absolutely right i hope when they play this back or if you watch this video you can see how weird that really is Wait, you brought your own security guard that's weird yeah, okay, Arthur. I understand what... Just please, Arthur. Please. The mic is meant to be used for other things than to just say the word weird. It's like someone taught him that word that day, so he used it as much as possible. Arthur, weird. Not normal. That's weird! Perfect. But, do, but don't use it in every sentence. Like, that's fucking weird. There we go. Now he's, now he's like, adding words to it. Not only is that weird, that's... That's fucking weird. Get it? Right now is the time Where to go and get some refreshments. Spend some amount money. Come spend some amount money. People, three people raise their heads, bro. Hey. Yo. Y'all weird. Y'all it. It reminds me of a RuneScape character that has like one prompt and you just keep spamming it. Y'all weird. He's basically an NPC that you keep pressing X on every time and he gives you the same stuff but in slightly varied tone. That's weird. That's weird. That's fucking weird. Y'all weird. So with tight ass Doc Martens tell y'all what to do. That's weird. That's Man, is, did the Doc Martens need to be loose? Are the foot off his feet really that cumbersome to you that they actually influence your decision on whether you should listen to someone? When I put on shoes, I don't usually think to tie them so tightly that people are going to listen to me or so loose that people are going to listen to me. But I guess thanks to Arthur, now I'm going to tie my shoes so loose that they're not even going to fit on. They're just going to fly off. It's like me screaming out Sesame Street. They ain't in your shit. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Wait. It's like weird. There we go. I hope y'all all get some pussy. Okay, so after Arthur says that's weird and breaks probably honestly a Guinness World Record off the most times that's weird has been said in the past minute, he then tells people that he really hopes they get some pussy. And it's almost as if he knows that people coming to the show probably don't. So he's dissing the fans of Def Noodles, which are his fans. Okay. <sighs> Arthur is a very logically flawed human being, but at least... He's not weird, unlike us. Uh, the comics, all right? Can we start? So Let's, uh, y'all uh, hilarious. <laughs> I'm glad y'all spent money to came out. Come out and talk shit. It's so weird. You you yep, it's very weird in a roast battle for people to roast each other. That's right, Arthur. Everyone's just a weirdo for just doing what they're told. I am starting to, you know when you say a word so much, you start to listen to it and you're like, it's, it sounds supernatural. You pay me, I'm about to get some of the money that you spent. So yeah, you pay me, cool. And I'm not your security guard either. My car is <laughs> oh, what is that supposed to be? 
That's some weird white dude shit, right? It's weird. It's, hey, man. Now we're getting Raciel. It's weird white dude shit, man. You saying weird white dude shit. Like, I have security. That's what that man, that's a white thing. There. My car needs parts. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I'll whoop your ass, too. Yeah, Arthur needs the mic taken off him because he starts threatening him. So that's all right. So now we've had two comedians come on stage and start threatening other comedians. I don't, I didn't know this was actual Fight Club, but I guess this is what comedy roast battles are. Wiling out is more like just deaf noodles wiling out, if you know what I mean. It's wow. Just, she wants to talk so much, bring her on stage. She seems so intelligent. At this point, Deaf Noodles gets another comedian, a brown one, so he's representing my team. Woo! This guy is not a very happy man, and he starts a fight with a girl in the back of a crowd who he calls Fat. She then gets invited to be on stage, and unfortunately for the brown comedian, woo, proceeds to wreck him. Let her talk! I'm sorry, she also belly bumps. <laughs> Salvo, who I honestly, like I said, cannot unsee Charlie Kelly. This is Charlie Kelly. Where are, you, where are you from? My mother's vagina. Impeccable answer, actually. Salute to you, Captain. Wow, I did not expect that. It's probably the best answer in a long time. Hey, hey, take a best shot. Whatever you want to say, say it. Go for it, baby. What you got, Mom? Spaghetti? <laughs> The fact that Deaf Noodle's own crowd has turned against him and is just saying, oh, no matter what she says, she's like got these infinite superpowers. It's like she turns Super Saiyan. What you got, Mom Spaghetti? Oh! <laughs> oh, shit. It's like that meme. Every It was a super hot fire meme every time someone says something and they're like, oh! Uh, we now have a third, <laughs> third comedian th threaten someone else. That's this is just uh, this is just impeccable. If your security guard wasn't here right now, man, you don't know what I was doing. Man, if he wasn't there, that guy wasn't there. Mm, I'd take this mic and I'd shove it where the sun don't shine. You know what I mean? Honestly, that was a pretty good joke. <laughs> I feel like this was the first time a roast has actually happened when you got someone in the audience who hated the other comedian came on and actually did something. There was no way the other guy was going to win the battle. The Indian comedian lost. Woo! But, you know, he, he just really did not put forth an effort and was getting really, really butthurt throughout the whole special. I feel like he should have done better and calculated his attempts, man. He really let me down. Doing good? Huh? Deaf Noodles then does some crowd work. Someone offers him a sip off a drink and he says, what? A ship? Which is probably the funniest thing he said all night. I'm not sure how he could see a cup and be like, is that a ship? Are you, oh, a sip? No, 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 I'm fine. A ship? A sip? No, I'm okay. <laughs> the way, ship, ship, a ship. No, 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 do you want, I said, can you taste my drink? I didn't even say anything. A ship, Titanic? No, seriously, bro, just, why you got icebergs in it? That's just ice. What, what is with all these ship references? Stop. You look like a thrift store swamp witch. Ah, uh, yes, of course, then we're back to round four or five or whatever round it is of roast battles. Miranda and the other guy there. I'm not sure where JP is, but he's probably too busy being justice of the peace behind the scenes. But uh, there is an ongoing roast battle, and I, at this point, probably started sleeping during the special. Um, Miranda looks like she grows mushrooms on her. Uh, Miranda grew up... People in the front row at this point are actually texting. You can see a girl in black texting because she is done with the show. Uh, it looks like a really hot venue, and by all accounts, it was a very hot venue. The air conditioning wasn't really there. And it does look like a little bit of a fire hazard, but nothing hot is being said, so. On Six Mile in Michigan, which is also how far away you can stand and still hear her. All right, we're going to call it right there. Give it up for Miranda. <laughs> Oh, that's JP? Who is the other guy? Oh yeah, Los something. Los Digits. I keep forgetting. That's Los Digits. He's Los Santos. I forgot, man. I'm so sorry. I forget. I get them confused. And I wish they fused because that would have been fun. Um, yeah, so that horrible thing goes on, and we skip past that to the real character, the greatest character, Arthur, who's back in town, and all he needs is a mic, and you know what he's about to say. It's like a catchphrase at this point. He's like the Kramer of this show. Like, he just walks in through the door. That's weird!
God damn. <laughs> that's a very, that's a hearty laugh, isn't it? He's like, I'm just here, dude. You spent money to be here. That's worse. He almost said it. He almost said, he teased you. That's dumb. Oh, he teased you? That's worse. That's dumb. That's weird. He's talking about he want to fight. That's weird. He said it. He said he's doing it again. That's weird. That's worse. That's dumb. That's weird. Arthur. Oh, my God. Arthur knows how to do it, man. No, this this is weird. Uh, we're gonna drop it. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. Human beings, weird. That's weird. This is weird. Everything's weird. Arthur is not from this planet because everything in this planet is weird to him. Drop a ticket link to the show next week. Arthur then goes off the stage to the side, and something else happens. This is now the fourth person who has done something wrong in the show or threatened to do something. It is a woman who throws water or some sort of beverage onto Salvo. And while I know it's funny in movies, this is considered add salt to the mix because you can't do that if it's unwarranted especially since salvo didn't even know this woman existed probably i think it's really really bad look and i don't care how your emotions get you should not be doing that to a person that is completely not okay and unwarranted really really poor look for everyone there At this point, they have a slate saying we are experiencing technical difficulties. When he comes back on stage, Deaf Noodles is holding two mics like dicks. I don't know why. We are not going to get out of here and we're not going to finish this if this keeps going. Okay, Corey, please. Corey, please. Corey. Charlie Kelly slash Salvo comes up to Dennis and starts talking to him like he's Dennis Reynolds from It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia and this is like his conscience. Take control of your comedy club, Dennis! I swear to God, if this was an animated segment, it would be the funniest thing ever. It's like an episode of Rick and Morty. It's chaotic. Okay, okay. So anyway, the show is predicated on the fact that this comedian named Salvo came all the way from Ohio so that he could participate in a roast battle and actually challenge Deaf Noodles to it. He paid for his ticket and probably the ticket of a lot of other people. I don't know why he traveled from Ohio to Los Angeles. I really don't want to get in the law of that because it just seems like people with too much time on their hands. But anyway, he did show up, which means he should be granted a chance to talk. And he waited the whole shitty show to get that little, little chance. But when that time comes, for whatever reason, Deaf Noodles decides, I'm not going to give you the mic to roast me and does this instead. Unfortunately, because of how insane you've been so far, I can't just give you the mic. I'm being told by my friends who are experienced comics to not let you- Dude, he's actually Charlie Kelly. This is actually Charlie Kelly. Please, come on now. Do you see the reaction? That's a Charlie Kelly reaction. Talk. So, Dave, what do you think? Should Salvo get it? TJ, TJ, should Salvo, should Salvo get it? What do you think? Hold up, hold up, I'm doing- He now starts going towards all of his other people asking, should Salvo get the mic for some reason? He says, and he claims that his professional and experienced comedian said that Salvo should not get the mic. I'm not sure why he teased him and said the whole show that he's going to get the chance to speak if he was going to do this. This seems like a very cowardly and shitty thing to do. I think that this is probably the worst look for Dennis since the shove. So actually the second worst thing he's done this show. But he goes around asking the audience and everyone in the audience is like, yes, give him a chance. That's what you said you were going to do. I'm doing a, let's see your security guard. What do you think Salo should get it? You back, you back this, you back your man? Did Salvo, should Salvo get a, a mic? What'd you say? Did he literally have to ask everyone in the crowd and hope for someone to say no? Should Salvo get a mic? 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 Ah, damn, everyone's saying yes. He wanted so bad. Should Salvo, should Salvo get a mic? Uh, Dennis, I love you, but yes. You think Salvo should get a mic? Yeah. You think Salvo should get a mic? Fuck Jeff Noodle! What do you think? What he then starts asking people why Salvo should get a mic because it's not enough to Dennis that most people are like yes He should get the chance to roast you back in a roast battle special, but he's now asking why do you see why people don't want to come to your club at this point? Why do you, buddy, why do you think Salvo should get a mic? Why do you think you should have the mic? He then asks Salvo why he thinks that he should have the mic as if he's a teacher asking someone why they shouldn't be on detention Turns out Charlie Kelly doesn't even need a goddamn mic because he's just as loud without it. I don't know why he was being this quiet the whole time. No, but seriously, no, no, I, I just want to... 
I just want to... I just want to... Yeah, at this point they start actually kicking out some of Salvo's fans to uneven the odds. Uh, I guess a lot of people who are being rowdy, according to Deaf Noodles, got escorted out of the premise so that more of the audience are now on his side. And then he proceeds to give Salvo the mic. Salvo gets the mic and... Much like Charlie Kelly trying to read, can't do it. He's not a good performer either. But that's the least convincing part of this. Hi, right, Salvo, do you think? I'm not gonna stand up here. Like every other but can you do stand up, though? Another hack comedian, comedian LARPer, that is playing the Joe Rogan experience with the fake Joe Rogan, get on the podcast, act like they're real comedians. I'm not gonna do that. So I'm gonna monologue for about an hour. How fucking pathetic. He starts monologuing and then security starts getting annoyed at him and kicks him out. So as soon as he gets the mic, he says maybe two, three things and they're like, Charlie Kelly, go back to Philadelphia where you belong. Everyone starts getting in on Salvo's face, and if you look at Deaf Noodles from the back, he is just standing there, looking at this chaos, smiling. Not actually being an active participant in the situation, and later he's going to give you the greatest excuse I've heard a man give in a long time. But, for now, we just see this man getting actually airlifted out of the premise. This is not a good look for you, and you know the You weird. Oh, Arthur finally delivers his finishing blow. You weird! Finally, Arthur. That is probably 20 shots. You've probably put more people in a comatose than you'd like to, Arthur. Your comedy has made many people sick, so sorry about that. They lift him out and throw him out, conceivably by force. Something that probably would warrant five people doing things that they shouldn't have done at this club. And that is the end of the show. There's no hundred dollar check. Miranda doesn't win. She doesn't scream anything. No one gets banned. But somehow, this ends up being worse of a look for Dennis than the first show. It is more rowdy and more crazy. And I'll tell you what, Dennis doubled down on Twitter because he was back at it, screaming at Salvo. This MF has been on my dick all weekend. You like the little bit of clout you're getting or are you just serving your boss? I will speak on all of it tomorrow on my podcast. Cool your panties, loser. I'm gonna sue you with the best lawyers Keemstar provides. <laughs> and we're taking that fucking office from you. Uh, so anyway, Salvo threatens to sue Deaf Noodles, just like he did to Keemstar. I don't know, man. It's a lot of white people with money. They really all scare me. He could actually be doing it, but I don't think, as of today, I haven't heard anything about a lawsuit. The next day. The next day on Deaf Noodles' podcast, he addresses the rumors and situations. And, uh, I mean, this man is the worst person for taking accountability and being responsible for a situation I've ever seen. I often wonder how the fuck he has a girlfriend. I don't think he does. All I mean to say by that is that I I'm just not sure how he takes accountability. Why the fuck did you push that? So everybody got me in the freeze frame. <laughs> so the podcast starts with Corey screaming into the mic at decibels that are ungodly. Um, he asks Dennis, why did you push that guy? And then makes a couple light jokes about it. Here's my rationale. Uh, this Kind of weird that they're all wearing the same shirt. I think that they did the podcast literally the minute after they got home. He really wants to be on stage. Let's give him the benefit of the doubt. And, you know, we let everybody in the building shit over. And he's like, he tried to break in. But he didn't try to break in because at the start I actually got the footage of him saying Miranda and then going towards that pigeonhole and looking inside and saying why won't you let me in the back and then he went and sat down normally. Yes Salvo is a loud person but that doesn't mean he's breaking in. If being loud means that you break in Miranda is the biggest break in thief of all time. To the green room. He eventually sat down and was like he did sat he, he sat down he actually said the words okay that's fine and sat down. I watched the video. Um you know, I see him on stage and purpose for being here. This, I even this, had I even had an EMS because they were threatening to have people fake seizures yeah, and do yeah. other shit. So I had to Def Noodles then says that he had to get an EMS because people were threatening to fake seizures. You no, know, I spent that shit a lot is of money. Lame as fuck. So he said he spent a lot of money getting an EMT because people threatened to fake seizures. And I would just like to break that point down very quickly and say that how could you possibly know? people were threatening to fake something if it happened on the day and you hired that person on the day. How did you do that? Did you that so raven it and have a premonition that people would fake their seizures and then come on and be like, I'm getting an EMT just in case? No. 
Because you have to have an EMT at a venue if there's a certain amount of people and you have to have uh, certain precautions if you have a, your place of your own because people can very easily sue you. It's, it's standard practice. Because I know, Dennis. Come on. You didn't get an EMT because people were going to fake seizures. You got it because you had to. You, you want to fake to have a seizure? That's the first thing I said. I was like, it, you weird as fuck. If you there we go. Arthur is back. He's on the podcast and he's using his favorite terminology. That's you weird. weird. That's weird. Weird as fuck. If you <laughs> That's weird with Arthur. Frogs is weird. Snails? That's a weird. Pelicans? That's a weird. What are you doing that? Yep. I set a boundary. I was like, we're going to do the yeah. show. Dennis then says, and I quote, I set a boundary. <clears throat> if that's setting a boundary, then I don't want to have my boundary set. Do you know what I mean? I don't think it's fair to say that someone whose back is turned gets pushed and that is setting a boundary. I think you can use your words, especially since you had a mic and be like, hey, can you sit down? I think there were many other actions you could have took before resorting to physical altercations. And I don't think in any way shape or form is it warranted i just don't think that that's the first port of call and it makes you look like a really really bad and sour human being for doing something so unwarranted yes salvo can be a troll and yes he can be very loud but so can a lot of people and like i said if it's your show and you're the main character the protagonist the person who everyone looks up to or even if they don't look up to you they just see you as a normal human being i think any normal human being's first reaction would not be to push someone off stage Comedians if it were any other comedy club, he would have gotten his ass beat like straight oh, yeah. up. Wouldn't just, even... But he wouldn't have got his ass beat at any other club because if he did get his ass beat at another club, they would have sued that club and all of its money and patrons. There is no way you can go to a comedy club and say something and get your ass beat. In fact, I know that that's not true because actual Kramer from Seinfeld one day decided to go crazy after Seinfeld and say the worst thing at a club. You can look this up. He screamed the wrong word at a club, you know, the word that you shouldn't say and people went from laughing to hating on him and he absolutely destroyed his career for that time being he said a joke that went way too far and nobody beat him up that was the only time they should have been like kramer you're about to get it nobody beat him up so if that happened there is no way just standing on stage with your back towards the audience can warrant what you did i didn't even be carried out he would have just had his ass beat um here's a twitter thing I, I found this i just thought it was funny about him saying i was establishing a boundary and he also says that he was trying to make everyone feel safe by doing that, I have no interest in boxing you in the ring. If you want to fight, this is my final offer. I will book a flight tomorrow, fly out within the week, and meet you at a mutually agreed street to murder you. This is my final offer. And his video before this was my life has been threatened. Deaf noodles, the biggest hypocrisy that I've seen in a long time, bro. Yeah, uh, Salvo yeah. showed it to him. I don't give a fuck. Like, yeah. it didn't change my life. He filled my pockets with money. Shout out to you, bro. Yeah, yeah. yeah you, filled, you filled our pockets with money. We're weird. out here. We're out here yeah. winning on your uh, on your hatred. Look, Deaf Noodles, you don't get to say that you don't care about someone and then have a whole segment and two or three videos about them. You can't say that. You can't claim to not care. And all you've done in the past few hours is tweet at him or reply and respond to his tweets. Unfortunately, that care is mutual. Yeah, he paid you. Your pockets are getting bigger. Great. Good win for you, but at the same time, you can't claim that you don't care about him. Also, again, let me remind you, you did something you shouldn't have. People's, people's home, place of business, they just do what the fuck you want. Yeah. Like, yell at everybody in there. Yeah. Yeah. Walk, walk, walk the in the pictures. back. Hell yeah. Fucking take the fries out the oil before they out, before they done and shit. What is Arthur saying? Is this what happens when he doesn't say that's weird? Does Arthur have no actual words? He's like his mouth just runs until that's weird comes out. He has nothing to say. You, you can't yeah. just go to you walk, go walk people people bag, walk yeah, place yeah, and take the, uh, take the the fries uh, the oil out they fries. You can't, done, you, man, yeah. but you just, hey man, you can't even just do, that is a thing that you can't do. Turning the stove off. You can't turn the stove off. People walking, you turn the stove off. That's can't do that. You can't do shit like that. Take a shit in the bathroom and not flush it. And can't, can't take a, take a shit, shit in the bathroom. bathroom. Can't, can't do, do shit, shit like, like that. that. Turn, turn that stove, stove off. Take, take a shit on the stove. stove. Turn, turn, turn their bathroom, bathroom off. Put the oil, oil in the toilet. toilet. Put make put some, some toilet, toilet wine with, with the toilet. toilet. Put, put, put serve it up on a nice hot plate of platter of plates, man. Everybody all keeping all keep keep on with the family. Take a shit in the plate and put it in the oil stove. You got fries for days, man. That's weird. Leave the door open. You can't. You can't just take a shit and not flush it and leave the door open. Fish it out. Say it's a loogie in my booty. You can't do that. That's that's just you can't do that. That's 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 weird. I mean, people are like saying you took the mic away from him and you you kicked out his fans. No, his his fans 
left as soon as he got dragged out that was a security that, guard that security dragged guard him out who too. dragged him out yeah, yeah people the like, security oh, guard just had enough and this is the final thing this is probably deaf noodles in a nutshell for anybody who hasn't watched if you've only watched the last minute this is probably the defining moment of deaf noodles instead of actually taking responsibility and being like yeah i kicked this guy at my club because he was being a menace the security guard decided that he had had enough in deaf noodles own club the security guard is so prolific and so uh such a high position that even he super supersedes Dennis. This is like being the president and the person who cleans your toilet, the janitor is like, get out, get out, get out, get out. I don't get who? Bruce Springsteen, get the fuck out of here. You can't perform. Who am I? I'm the guy that cleans the place that he shits in. That's amazing. The security guard has so much precedence that he was like, Dennis, Dennis, I know that this is your comedy club and shit, but I hate this guy. I'm going to kick him out, okay? At this rate, the security guard might as well kick Dennis out and his friend, Arthur. Arthur, get out! You've been saying weird too much. Unbelievable. What? Dennis? Dennis? <laughs> Miranda? Yeah, get out! Man, everybody needs to get out the club. The club is mine. Security guard Mike for the club for 2022. Security guard Mike. Oof. Oof, oof, there's no music in the club. I kicked the DJ out. That's yeah. some, see, that's when people would be like, oh, Stephen always bringing up race. That's some white boy shit, man. It is, dude. We ain't, ain't we can't just, do that shit. You ain't showing. Uh, then the black comedians bring up race, which is needless and silly. Run up in nobody's space like that and just gonna be like, oh, I'm just gonna do as I please and disrupt yeah. it. Nah. Well, that's what, that's what dude did at Ace Fest. He got kicked out for disrupting it. I mean, I don't like the Ace Fest as much as you. Austin Broomhead is not my favorite creator either but man you went to his festival that he put on and caused a ruckus and they had to kick you out so you're just doing the same thing and by your friends over there apparently that's some white boy shit so you know and, regardless and, I, of and, we do, and we don't have no interest in him no yeah, like, yeah. we don't do the same type of thing Nobody like, we, don't, do. we don't like that's the thing like we don't care enough about him to be clipping up his videos. Does this? Yeah, but you I do care enough about him to make videos about him. Like the last three, four videos have been on this Salvo Pancakes guy. I'm pretty sure the only video you should make about him is, is he Charlie Kelly and why he is. I'm just saying, but you guys are not making that video. He can't get anything else. He has no talent, nothing. Yeah, we have, we have a full fledged business where we entertain people daily. He, yes, he has no talent. And you guys are the most talented people of all time. And that there's no discussion otherwise. That's perfectly fine. That's why you're doing so well and he's not. Sure, let's go with that narrative, but let's not push people. Hey, then Salvo has slaves. Okay, and we're back to this. All right, then. All right, the black people, they did not want to be there. We tried to free them. They know what's going free on. Free security guard, the limo driver. Y'all, they had paranoia in their eyes, y'all. Ever. You, they, listen. Then you should leave, Corey, because what you just said was asinine and stupid. Just because someone hires employees that are off a certain color of race, it doesn't mean that they're that word that you just used. That's really, really silly. In fact, if anything, it should show the fact that he's not actually having a bias on who he hires an important thing. But I'm not going to talk about that because... That's weird as <laughs> Follow us on this journey. Peace. Dennis ends the video by saying, follow us on this journey and ironically, peace, which is the thing that he preached the least during the show. So that is the second roast battle. It was a wild and manic show. He decided to have another one. He's having another one on Friday. And um, I'm assuming more people might turn up because infamy creates um, buzz and people might actually come there to see a show. Listen, Deaf Noodles, I think your insistence on having the show is fine. Your persistence with this topic and your willingness and wanting to make it a comedy club and make it something is good. I think you trying things is always going to be good. I don't fault that. I really think that there's a big issue with you overreacting and I think them Twitter fingers need to stop because it's like two different people. On one hand, we get Deaf Noodles, the guy who's trying to explain things. And on the other hand, we get Deaf Noodles on Twitter, the guy who should probably be locked up for years and years and years. And I just need to know where it makes sense because it's not making sense right now. So uh, Deaf Noodles, I would like to say this, stop. Stop pushing people in the back. Start doing stand-up comedy. Maybe if your jokes was funny, you wouldn't have to resort to violence. I just never saw a comedian come out to ring entrance music. Have you ever seen a comedian get their record read out? This comedian has 10 knockouts, six fights, somehow knocked more people out than he fought. He's got four losses and three people after him right now. It's Dennis Noodles. Have you ever had a comedian have a referee in the ring being like, don't, no dirty fighting? Have you ever? When was the last time you went to a comedy club when there was a referee in stripes just waiting to blow the whistle to be like, foul, you can't do that, foul. I don't know what this is, Dennis, but 
Your fight comedy club. That's weird. All right, bye. <laughs> she ain't even got a ass. She did a dash and bit a last. You know a dash and she know. Baby, like to scream.